Hello everyone. It's um, a bit chilly here today, a bit rainy and showery. So I'm going to do some work inside and I thought I'd make myself some new shampoo because I've just run out. And um, I'm a huge fan of Rosemary Gladstar, so I've adapted her recipe. And this is how I'm going to make my shampoo. Now, as you can see, I turned grey or silver as I prefer, or platinum. Anything sounds better than grey. So um, I'm using rosemary. Usually you would use rosemary for dark hair because it would encourage the, the rich colour of the dark brunette. But I'm using it because it encourages hair growth and um, health of the hair and the thickness of the hair. So I want to keep my hair healthy and thick and strong. So that's why I'm going to use rosemary. I'm using calendula flowers because they will give me little golden highlights and make me look like I've got lovely hair. So there are lots of different herbs you can use for different hair colours, but this is what I'm using for my own particular type of hair. Um, I've got boiling filtered water here. So I'm, I'm going to put in the, the flower petals and the rosemary leaves. I'll just put all of the rosemary in. And that has to steep for about half an hour. So I'll be coming back to that when it's been steeping for a while. You can leave it bubbling actually on top of a stove. I'm just going to steep it and make a really strong tea. So the properties of rosemary are that it will strengthen your hair, will encourage hair growth, prevent hair loss and make your hair really strong and healthy. And the calendula is very cleansing because it has a lot of saponins in it. It's a great lymph cleanser. So it's going to cleanse the hair and cleanse the scalp, but it's also going to add those lovely coloured highlights. So if you were blonde, you could add chamomile as well. So you see, all, all the plants have different roles. And I suppose this may not be medicinal per se, but it will have medicinal effects on your scalp because it's going to keep your scalp clean and prevent, you know, different herbs could prevent fungal infections, dandruff and problems like that. And um, you choose the herbs to suit your own hair type. So I will put some information below the video so that you can have a look and see which, which herbs would suit your hair type the best. I have approximately, I have an ounce of herb material here and I'm using eight ounces of the filtered water. But obviously you can adjust that if you want to make more or less. Mmm! Smells really delicious, smells lovely. So I'm going to cover this to, to, main, to retain the aromatic oils. So we'll come back to this in half an hour, strain it off and then add the rest of the ingredients. And at the same time, I'll be showing you how to make a hair rinse as well. The tea has been infusing for over an hour. So I reckon it'll be strong enough now and I'm going to strain it out. So I'm putting it into this bowl. I have um, a funnel with some muslin in it. There we are. I add three ounces of Castile soap and I use Dr. Bronner's because it's so pure. And this one is the Baby Mild, so it doesn't have any fragrance. It's just pure Castile soap. So I'm going to put that in and then I have some beauty oil here. This is a facial serum oil so it's got lots of really wonderful nutritious oils in it. I'm just putting about half a teaspoon in. Give it a stir and then you add a few drops of your favorite essential oils. So I have wild rosemary because I've used rosemary as the main herb in this. So I'm just going to add a couple of drops. You add about up to 25 drops. So I've put about seven or eight of rosemary. I love cypress. So I'm putting some cypress in. There's about 10 drops of that gone in. And black pepper because it's so sweet and it's just gorgeous with the cypress. 
So that's it. You could just use whatever oils you prefer, uh, whatever essential oils. So already you can see it's a bit of a soapy mix. There's a few bubbles coming as I am stirring it. I'm using a, a brown glass bottle. I, I am a grown-up, I'm an adult, and I don't have any small children in the house. I prefer to use glass to plastic, so I am putting my shampoo into a glass bottle. But if you have small children in the house, um, you might want to consider using plastic. It's just that I think if this should get broken, you know, I'll just have to deal with it. I'm a grown-up, I can, I can survive. And that's it. I, all I have to do now is label it. To be honest, when you're using this, it doesn't create all the bubbles and lather that you would usually associate with um, a shampoo when you're using commercial shampoos. And that takes a little bit of getting used to. But once you get over that, you will not believe how clean and shiny and lovely your hair is. It really conditions it. And don't forget, the only reason people are using conditioners today is because commercial shampoo strips the oils, makes your hair dull and makes your scalp itchy. So it's worth getting something healthy and foregoing all the bubbles. They're just an illusion of cleanliness. So I think I have enough in there. Last bit. There now. So I'll have to find another jar for the surplus. There you are. So now I'm going to show you how to make um, a vinegar hair rinse. Unlike commercial shampoos, this homemade herbal shampoo is not going to leave a horrible residue in your hair. But nevertheless, it's still nice to rinse with an apple cider rinse. Um, the vinegar restores the pH to the scalp and um, gives a lovely shine to the hair. But when you add in the herbs as well, you're going to get all those attributes and benefits as well. So I'm just using the same herbs here to make um, a, a herbal vinegar rinse for the hair. And to use this, you would wash your hair with the shampoo, um, rinse your hair, and then you'd put on you know, a little bit of this, you'd maybe put a handful, a palmful of vinegar and spread it through your hair. But it will have been infused with these lovely herbs that smell absolutely incredible. And, um, and then you leave it in your hair and the, the vinegar smell, if it's still there, will dissipate. But the benefits of the herbs will give that shine and luxuriant sheen and a clean, balanced scalp. And all you have to do is fill a jar with your herbs, as I'm doing here, and then you pour in your apple cider vinegar. So I'm just going to keep putting these in till I have a jar nearly full. It's just like making a tincture or any other herbal vinegar that you might use for salad dressings. You could use this for a salad dressing. It's so versatile. You'd have a lovely rosemary calendula taste on your salad. One of the benefits of making things with herbs is that you get to work with really beautiful materials. The beautiful colours of this calendula, it's orange, it's yellow, it's golden, it's just so beautiful. And when you put it next to the green, the, this fresh, lovely, pale green of the rosemary, they just look wonderful together. So I think I have enough in there now. I'm going to put in the cider vinegar that I made last year from our own apples, which was such a thrill to do. It was the first time that I made it. And we got a huge batch, so I have plenty left. And I'm just going to cover the herbs. It's like making a tincture, it's exactly the same. Make sure there's no bubbles. Now this is beautiful, natural, healthy. So you could actually use this on your salad dressing if you wanted a lovely rosemary calendula vinegar for salad dressing. It'll be really tasty and it draws, the, the apple cider vinegar draws out all the minerals, which is also why it's beneficial for the scalp and the hair. 
So there's the finished hair rinse. I mean, it's not finished, it's going to infuse for six weeks, but it's, it's there in the jar. And doesn't it look beautiful? Those colours, I mean, even looking at that makes you feel better, makes you feel healthier, makes you feel closer to nature just by looking at it. So after six weeks, I will strain this off, put it into a brown bottle and I'll use it as a hair rinse um, when I've washed my hair. If you've made any kind of hair care products, maybe you can tell me about it in the comments um, or if you use different herbs or what you found to be effective for you. It'd be very interesting to see what other people's recipes are. I'll let you know how this turns out. So in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Remember all the instructions are down below and all the information about Danu's Irish Herb Garden, you can click on the links. And um, enjoy making your shampoo and your hair rinse and I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.